Hi Canuck Capsules, welcome to the Chronicles of New Eden. I'm Dan Snod, the co-CEO of Sorin Advance, an alliance in Wormhole and Lusik. I'm also the co-host of the Canuck Capsules Chronicle. It's a weekly show about Eve's news every Tuesday at 2015 Eastern Time Zone. In today's episode, we're gonna dive into the intricate political structure of the Calvary State. Last episode, we talked about the mega corporation, leaving me wondering what are their role into the political structure. I hope you're gonna enjoy to dive into this episode with me. Please keep in mind that I'm doing that podcast to get better in English. So I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Political structure. While the state is built on corporate capitalists, which gives the corporations dictatorial powers, they are just as bound by colliery custom and law as the individual, and the fierce continual competition between the corporations ensures a healthy consumer base, social environment which benefits everyone. The Chief Executive Panel. Together, the Big Eight, the nickname for the eight mega corporations who handle most domestic matters, own more than 90% of all property within the state. Each of the eight is made up of thousands of companies of various sites, ranging from simple mining companies to powerful police organizations. Each corporation rules its territories like its own kingdom, with its own corporate law and little interference on domestic affairs from the chief executive panel. The chief executive panel is a political entity which itself is jointly owned and run by the Colony Mega Corporation. The CEO of the mega corporation sits on the board of the panel to ensure that the companies are kept in line when competing with each other, smoothing other potential conflicts before they escalate out of control. The panel also handles the foreign policy of the colony state and is the closest thing to a government that the colony has. The Chief Executive Panel also owns executive authority over the Calder need, with the power to dictate any offensive or defensive action deemed necessary to preserve the security of the state. of record. Owing to this rather fragment style of leadership, the House of Records was also established by mutual agreement to act as a central source for record keeping within the Calderie State. The House of Records act as a national archive, digitally storing vast quantities of data that detail every transaction, business level, and governmental interaction within the state. Calderi Business Tribunal The Calderi Business Tribunal, CBT, was established by mutual consent of the CEP. The CBT is regarded as the second most powerful entity within the state, operating independently of the Big Eight and authorized to mediate in, modify, or cancel any deal, transaction, or agreement made between corporations within the state. Corporate blocks. From the outside to uninformed eyes, the Calvary State appeared to be a solid and unified corporate meritocracy. While this has been true 
for short periods over its history, typically during time of great trouble for the Caldari people, there are three distinct ideology blocks within the state that have grown ever more apparent as Caldari society has evolved. The first of these three blocks, the Practicals, is headed by the second largest mega corporation in the Caldari state, the Sico Uvesta. Commonly known as the Exploiters, the group also includes both the CBD Corporation and the Nugoe Yubi. These corporations have practiced unethical business practices for decades and are frequently associated with organized crime. The practicals see the other empires as potential markets ready to be exploited by unrestricted and unregulated trade. Caring more from their bottom line than from who is a friend with who, and even less about what long term political ramifications their unscrupulous business practice can have. Basically, mercantilist is their views on trade. They believe that profit for one always means loss for another, and they will stop at very little to ensure the state always come out on top. The second of these three groups are the liberals, who views completely contradict those of the practical in regards to interstellar trade. The liberal bloc believes in fostering improved relations with all the other empires, creating an interstellar environment where there are no trade barriers and where goods and services flow freely across borders. They believe in trade deals that mutually benefit the participants and the empire can come together in peaceful prosperous future reward only through cooperation. The liberals are led by the external and friends issue come corporation and also include the Iyas Yoda Mega Corporation and the issue comes daughter corporation, the new biotech. The state's strong position within Concord is maintained and accentuated by the liberal bloc's belief that promotion universal peace so that trade can flow freely and cultures mingle peacefully in Paramount to ensure economic stability for the state. The final group is less concerned about trade than about the position that the Caldari state holds in contrast to the other empires, in terms of both military capability and economic strength. These are the Patriotics, and they are led by the monolithic Kala Kyoto Corporation, which is the largest mega corporation in the Caldari state, followed by the Lai Dai and the Wairi Komi Corporation. The Patriots seek to cultivate the Caldari heritage, and may often be found reminiscing about the great Rata Empire of old or weeping for their lost home word, Caldari Prime. The most fanatic of them cry for renewal of the war with the Federation, but they are a minority. The Patriots are willing to negotiate alternative way to acquire Caldari Prime other than true war, but they know they can only realize that dream by convincing the Federation of the economic and, most importantly, militaristic superiority of the Caldari state. They strive to promote a state that outshines the Federation in every possible way. Finances. 
more than any other faction, the Qatari state has a fixation on its finances and financial system. The state has no central currency, with each mega corporation using its own script. Independent corporations use the script of a patron corporation or leave. Each mega corporation is then built around a massive investment bank, which forms a skeleton for each individual corporate empire. Caldari funds unlimited services as the closest Caldari equivalent to a central bank. In addition to performing many of the functions of a normal financial institution, Seagard Financial was a competitor to the major Caldari banks until YC29, when it was placed under extreme sanction by the chief executive panel and destroyed through corporate warfare. Thanks for joining me in this episode. I hope you enjoyed the journey. Give it a thumbs up and make sure to hit the follow button for more episodes. Today, we delve into the intriguing contrast between the Caldari and the Ama. While the Caldari structure has no room for religion, unlike the Ama Empire, where is the heartbeat of their existence. Now, as we wrap up this chapter, I invite you to stick around during the holiday season. Who knows what surprises and exciting content I might unwrap for you. Your support means the world and I can't wait to continue this adventure together. Stay tuned and let the holiday tale unfold.